Hello, lovely people. Thank you for stopping by. I said that I was going to video a second video to go along with the first video. So that's why I'm wearing the same shirt because I am. Um, thank you for putting up with me in the first video. I didn't watch it. I just posted it. But I know that I did a lot of gushing <laughs> and I went too deep into my author journal and I apologize um, that we didn't get to the craft along. So here we are with the craft along. Thanks for coming. I hope you're all well. And um, so you'll probably get two videos from me tomorrow and then hopefully a third on Saturday. I'm feeling better, except my eyes are blurry from my restasis, and um, my throat is still scratchy, but other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. So, thank you for stopping by again, and um, if you're new and you're inspired in any way, please hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. And if you have a YouTube channel, let me know so I can follow you too. So tonight, we're going to do something. I'm going way back in time. Rach from, uh, Rachel from Roxy Creations did this, I want to say probably th three years ago, maybe two. Um, and I've been doing it since. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to bring something back because I'm out of them first of all, and second of all, when I do make them, I don't even think to video them. And I know a lot of people do, um, you know, clusters or what have you. And I just have lots of different ways that I make them. But this way is Rachel's way. And um, I don't know if she still does them this way, but it's a fabulous way. You can make a ton of different clusters they can either go on the sides of um you know journal pages and or they can dangle like for example this one I stamped on the back of it with the sand pool stamp and um I added a button and there's some lace and a little number and just scraps that's all it is so you can hang it you know on something and use it as a dangle it's very very lightweight um, before you put the button on, you could run it through your embossing machine and make a twisted tangle out of it. Um, just make sure you do it before you put your button on. But you can add buttons, you could add beads, you could add nothing. These are sewn, but you do not have to sew them. You can see the sewing on the back. You do not have to sew them. You can just glue them. It's perfectly fine. They work just the same. I just happen to sew them all the time I always have and um so yeah so some of them I leave as clusters this I made just recently um Rach from Rach and Bella Crafts she did clusters by just putting fabrics and laces together and adding a ball pin how genius is that I mean that's fabulous so I have a bunch of these now because I already had a bunch of these little pieces cut out and um so they took no time to put together I just added a button and a pin and boom and I love them and they're so lightweight they don't take up a lot of bulk um same with these they don't take up a lot of bulk except for the button um but still again it's just scraps there's fabric there's a little bit of um antique lace and just ran it through my sewing machine um, if I wanted to dangle it, um, you could either put book page on the back and just dangle it by itself, or you could print some fabric on some paper. Um, you could print a paper onto fabric. You know, I don't have any ticking, so I will print ticking on fabric from a digital. This happens to be pink. Well because pink's my favorite color. In my world, there are very few colors other than pink, <laughs> as you all know. I'm trying, 
and stretching. And then you can add words or numbers. Um, there's a bunch of things that you could add to them. So let's make some. I'll show you how. It's very simple, very easy, and you can make a bunch of these in one sitting in about 10 minutes. All you need is, now this is my Twisted Tangle scraps. Anything that I have that I think that I can make a Twisted Tangle out of, um, I put in here, like long strips of things. And if you want to know more about Twisted Tangles, I do have a video on them. Um, but I suggest that you visit Donna at Twisted Tangle Studios because she has, she is the Twisted Tangle, um, Twisted Tangles person. I'm sure that all of you know who she is. She's fabulous. And, um... So in here, I keep all of my scraps for my Twisted Tangles. So anytime I have like long scraps that I know I can make Twisted Tangles out of, I put in here. Or like words, book pages, things like that. So when I make my clusters, which I'm out of, I pull out this tin. And then um, I'll pull out like words and... Um, Depending on what journal I'm working on, of course, right now I'm working on Beatrix Potter, so I'll pull out some ephemera, just scraps. Uh, no, these are words and numbers. And these I print on fabric. These are all the words from the kit, from the um, Beatrix Potter kit that I'm working on, but they're printed on fabric. And what I do is, I once I finish printing them on fabric, I iron them onto um, a fusible. It's very, very, very thin. It's the thinnest that they have um, fusible web because it's so easy. I'll show you. It's so easy to cut them up and keep them, you know, from curling or flopping around. So um, it's panel on and I'll get it real quick. It's just the interfacing. It's by Pat, uh, Pelon. And this one's really old. I mean, you can still get this, but this one's really old. And, um, but it's the light, it's the light, light weight. But I find that it's much easier um, for me to, once I, once I print it, I iron it onto the fuse interfacing and then I cut them up and they stay nice and, you know, they're, they're still fabric and they look good and um, they cut so easily. I'll just cut one. I'll just cut a row for you and show you. This is just a little tip for anybody that likes to print words on fabric. I don't do this with all my fabric. It just depends on what I'm using it for. If I'm using it for words, I'll take the whole sheet after I print it and then I iron it right onto the interfacing and look how easy it is to, to um, you know, to, to cut those words nice and straight and also you know, they stay, they stay really, like, firm. They don't, like, curl up and stuff. Some of my words really, like, I have a, a lot of, a lot of fabric um, words and sentiments um, that I did not use fusible web, and it's too late now because they're already cut up. It would take forever. I'd have to piece them all together and then iron them, and that would be forever. So I keep those in here. So you'll need some words, you'll need some numbers, scraps. Um, last night I gave a go at printing on, I mean stamping on piano paper. So I might use some of that tonight too. 
it's still curled after I printed it, but I think once I glue it down, I think it will be good. So I just took a couple of my stamps, some of my sample stamps, some of my Tim Holtz stamps, my old Tim Holtz stamps. I might actually watercolor some of these, but I just, I really want to use my um, piano paper. And I think that looks really cool. It's got a lot of texture. You know, it's got the lines in it. And I think once it's glued onto paper, it will look really nice. So, yeah. So, that was kind of fun. It was a fun little thing to do. And um, what I did was I taped it down to one of my um, craft boards. Because, you know, it curls. It's frustrating. Even if you press it, iron it, it doesn't matter. As soon as you take it off, it curls. So, I, um, what I did was I scotch taped it around here, brought it around and scotch taped it so it was nice and flat. And then I just stamped where I wanted to. Then I took it off and I just tore it all out. You know, you can see where I just tore, you know, I tore all the pieces. So I thought we might use that tonight as well. It's just a little idea, you know, something fun. I did see somebody do this. Um, what is her name? She didn't do it exactly like this. I can't remember exactly how she did it. But um, her name is... begins with an N and I can't remember it's not Nazi um, I can't remember um, but anyway she just did it recently so I thought I'm gonna give that a go and I really enjoyed doing it number one and number two I think the results are pretty cool and instead of putting them in one of my boxes like this I thought what I would do is keep them in one of my pieces of packaging and then that way um, they'd stay flat. You know what I mean? I can put them under something heavy and they'll stay flat until I use them. So that was fun. And like I said, I didn't pick any specific stamps. See, it just flattens right out. And I think eventually, you know, maybe it will stay flat especially anything I want to stay flat I just lift up my board and underneath my board I also have a piece of fiber uh, not fiberglass but you know that see-through plastic glass so I'll just leave it under there hopefully not forget about it <laughs> and um you know it'll flatten so and I also wanted to mention really quick, if anybody is looking for anything like this or you're looking for anything like these, these snap folders, I used to get these from Amazon or Staples. And I think you got two in a package for like $7. Did I hit the camera? I hope not. Are you still seeing me? Let me just straighten this a little bit. Sorry about that. I think I hit it. Um, if you're looking for these or you're looking for these, I just found a company about two months ago and now everybody, everybody found the company because every time I turn on my computer, I see somebody else doing a T-E-M-U T -E -M -U haul. And they are a Chinese company, just like Wish or, um, I can't remember the name of the other company. But they're based in Boston, Massachusetts. So you get delivery very quickly. And um, very inexpensive. You get two of these boxes in a Ziploc bag. Then they're, you know, packaged like this. And they are fantastic. I have, 
Anyway, they're $1.99 for two. So, no. The 89 cents for two. These come in a five pack for two dollars. And they are very sturdy. They are no different than, um, they come in clear as well. Even the blue you can see through. I mean, it really doesn't matter. But I have all of my kits that I've printed in here. And then any of my fussy cuts, like for this project, all of my fussy cuts and things I've made already for ephemera for my journal I'm working on goes in here. Once I'm done with the journal, if I have anything left over for Beatrix Potter, it will go in a plastic folder and in my file cabinet. And it will say, Beat you know, it will say Beatrix Potter. And it will go with like all my Easter and spring things. So it's just a, a tip. And um, yeah, so you get two of these in a package and I think they're 89 cents for two. So that's just, you know, if you're interested. And they give you a Ziploc bag. Oh, and the other thing too is I ordered, it only, it comes in five days. And if for some reason you don't get it in five days, they credit you, they still send it, but they credit you $5, which is crazy because now um, I got something in six days instead of five days, so I got $5. I got something in seven days instead of five days, and I get another $5. So I've got $10 of credit to spend, which, I mean, you can get a ton of stuff for $10 from them because they're just like Wish or I can't think of that other company, but I think you know what I mean. And they're both, like I said, they're based in Boston, Massachusetts, so you get it really fast. So let's get to tonight's project. But before we do, I mentioned in while I was gushing over my journal, <laughs> kind of a little bit, I um, coordinated with some tags, which I forgot to show you, tags and journal cards with these flowers. I also wanted to let you know, because this was important, I printed this on linen paper. So when you feel it, it doesn't feel any different than the cover. So this is printed on linen paper by Swarthmore. You can get it on Amazon, but it's pretty expensive. If you're in the States, um, you can get a box of, I believe it is, uh, let's see. 500 sheets for $23 for 500 sheets. And I mean, it will take you forever to go through 500 sheets because you don't really use linen paper and everything. But I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted it not to be raised up off of the cover. I wanted it to feel part of the cover. So that's why I use linen. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get started. So what you'll need for your base, I use tea stain paper, and this is just regular copy paper that I tea stain. And like I said, I brush it on. Depending on what paper you use will depend on what you get. Um, sometimes I iron it, sometimes I don't. I haven't had a chance to iron it, so this is what we have. And the first thing that you do is you get some scraps. And I like to start with the lighter base um, to start with um, and then build on my lighter base. And I'll bring one out just as an example to kind of show you how I work this. Let me find one that's... Now, I'm going to be using some Beatrice Potter... I'm going to be using some papers and Beecher Potter fabrics that I printed only because I want them to go real well with my journal. But um, as you can see, I start with like a lighter base. This is just um, graph paper, regular graph paper, not, you know, antique or vintage or anything. And then um, there's some document back there. You can use book page. Um, then, there's a, then there's a piece of fabric, a number, some more lace, 
a button, and that's it. So that's what we'll do. So I'll start with a lighter base. And um, I'll put down all my lighter bases. And, you know, this is not easy for me on camera because I like... I, I take a long time to audition things, as you know. So, I'm going to try not to completely empty my twist and tangle container. But, I like working with this container as opposed to my other scraps container because, you know, they're small. And these are small and thin. So, um, let me just get some. Good, I have some right here. So I'm going to start by just tearing and just putting it down, you know, as tall or as, as tall as you want or as short as you want. I have enough white paper now to make paper, so I'm going to see if I can get a small tripod. Um, um, I save all my white scraps. This I wouldn't save because it has blue in it, but anything that has white that I, you know, cut off or what have you, I save. And then once a year, I make uh, handmade paper. If I can get a small um, tripod, that's pretty. So then I'll do something like this. Put that scrap there. And of course, I need some words. That's just part of a document or something. So I'll do that. And I just, I kind of do it in a little assembly because it's quicker. So it's like you're making a collage board, only you're making these individual little, oh no, did I close my window? Yeah, I did. Sometimes they get through the screen. It's just this little, oh, I hate those little things. They're just little, like little gnats. But the, it's, the window and screen are closed, so I don't know how it got in. So let's see. Um, that's really pretty. See, I'm just pulling out scraps from my little can here. I don't think you need to see the can. I'm just, like I said, I'm not being fussy or anything like that. I'm just pulling out some scraps that I have in here. It's kind of fun, too, because you look at it and you're like, wow, I haven't used that. And I used that on uh, this kit or what was that from, you know? I love scraps. That's kind of short. I think I've got a longer one. So I need some words for that. Um, this is from the kit, so I'll use that. A scrap from the kit I'm working on. And it's got some words on it. I need words for the other ones. Let's see. Words, words, words. I need some words for these. That's just how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. And like I said, if you don't have, you know, scraps of documents... You could always use book page. I mean, I've used book page thousands of times. But I like to have them in a box on hand to flip through and say, okay, this, you know, what have you. Um, and like I said, this goes way back, probably three years. And like I said, um, the first person I ever saw do it was Rachel from Roxy Creations. Um, and I've been making them since. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to bring it back. Why not? I'm just kind of, they've been rolled up in there. Um, so then I'm going to put that. 
I don't want to cover up too much of my white and I don't want to cover up too much of my words. And I have to remember I have some fabric still and some lace to put on here. So let's see if I can find some, this is pretty. I'm trying actually to find some um, more scraps of my paper I'm using right now, but I suppose it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to match the project. And like I said, you just want to kind of layer it so um, and you're going to glue it you know, just like anything else. And like I said, you don't have to sew it. If you're if you're not a sewer, don't sew it. Just glue it. I'll just put a little bit of glue on mine because I'll be sewing them. Where are all my... I know I have more scraps from my... Um... Or maybe I didn't put them in here. That's all right. I have plenty of others. That will go good. And just tear away from you so that you don't have, um, you know, any white. So you don't have to ink it or anything. But they're really pretty and they do add a lot of dimension, which I love layers and um, I love... Um, I love, I love layers. I love mixing fabrics. I love the dimension. I love, you know, everything about these. And like I said, they're very versatile. You can use them for tucks. You can use them. Oh, here's a pretty um, piece of something. It looks like a, um, it's white, very white. Mm, too white. But if I flip this over and do something like this, and this, then I can put that there. I'm not real good at collaging, but I try. I love it. I love doing it. Um, because it's fun, you know, and it's relaxing and you really don't have to think about much. Let me just grab another scrap. Like I said, I'm not being too fussy, but I don't, but I do want some specific colors and stuff. That's pretty, but it's too orange. That would look too much like. I'm gonna turn this one over because I know that there's some words on it because I really like this piece. I like the red on it. So I'm gonna do this. And some script. And then what I do is I put these little bits over here because then you can add to them if you have to. You know? Oops, that's upside down. That will drive me crazy. I can do a lot, but I can't do upside down. I don't know why. I can do sideways. I cannot do upside down. <laughs> Isn't it silly? Silly. I don't want to get rid of any of the color in that. It's pretty. And so, yeah. I hope you're all good. I'll do, um, I'll put these up tonight and let them process. And then I'll be back again tomorrow to do some more videos. Since I'm feeling so much better. And a little bit more confident. I definitely lost my confidence. Oh my goodness, I lost my confidence. But it's back. I'm not as shy anymore. <laughs>
great shy I used to be shy never in a million years but I think I'd be doing something like this that's for sure this is pretty isn't it so pretty I have no idea where it came from but it's pretty um here Okay, so now what I'm going to do, since I have some white and some script, some little bit of color, some numbers, words, you know, I've got all that going on. Now, my next thing is to close up my scraps. Leave that there just in case. I might need it. So I'll close up my can and put that back aside. And the next thing is my fabrics. So over here, I have another little box and inside I have a bunch of fabric. And don't be judging me because these are just scraps. See, look, paper from the last time I did this. Because what I do is pick everything up and then, you know, because I, Put it over here and just get this aside. So no judging about this because this is just my little bits. See, I put this, this is part of the kit. I put it on, um, I printed it on fabric. This I stamped on fabric. This is some vintage Beatrix Potter fabric in flannel so I cut it up but isn't it so sweet it's so sweet I don't know if it will go with the journal but it's really cute look at that little Peter Rabbit so cute so now I'm going to add some fabrics now sometimes your fabric pieces might be too big or too small which is fine just snip it and rip it and you want those fuzzy ends. Now, what I do with my fuzzy ends, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm really not crazy. Although some of you might think so. This, I keep all my threads in. See? Because I can put them under things. So anytime I have threads for my project, when I tear paper, I mean fabric, I'll leave the scraps in here and when I'm done, I put all the threads in this envelope and use them under buttons or whatever. Fun, right? More tips. <laughs> I'm still on tips, tricks, and hacks. So, let's see. Put that little piece of fabric there and that piece of fabric will go there. I I do want to use, like I said, the the Beatrix Potter um, because these will be going into that particular journal. This is just too cute and I can't cut it down. So I might have to remove that, put that there, and put that there so that we can see him as Peter. And then I will just stick this over here with my paper. And it moves pretty quickly. Oh, I've got to use her for sure. But how? She's so big. I'll think of something. She's too big. And look what I just did. So once you figure out, okay, I've got all my pieces. And you could do this, like, if you're confident enough. I'm still not. I always have to audition. Still. <laughs> three years later I'm still auditioning but it's okay you do you you know if you if you feel confident I want to be you <laughs> I'll be truthful let's see I also have I thought I had some of this I do let me just add some more of this. As you can tell, it's some of my favorite. Because <laughs> I printed it on fabric. Um, just 
can go. That's kind of a big piece, but I like it. I don't want to cover up all that script, though. I really like script and numbers and words, of course. I love words. Sentiments, words. Put that over here. And then, of course, I pulled out some of my little baby buttons and then some other buttons. I, I just, you know, pulled them out because I'd be here all night if I took out my buttons. So I just pulled out what I thought I might need. And like I said, I don't throw my threads away because you can use them. And I like that kind of torn look. Can you see that? How pretty it looks on fabric. Really looks nice on fabric. So I'll put that there. I don't want too many looking exactly the same. But I do definitely want to use the fabric in the kit. I don't remember which other fabric I printed. I know I printed some ticking. But I don't want to use too much pink because there's not a lot of pink in it. Um, oh dear, there's so many cute, 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 cute things. I just have to use this because it's so pretty. And I definitely want this white piece showing and then this and then that. And I need a piece of fabric there. I'm sorry to have my fabric way over here, but it's just easier. Um, this I stamped on. Uh, let's see. Put that there. Yeah, I, I like to stamp on. If I have little pieces of fabric, I like to stamp on them. Well, I like to stamp on fabric anyway. See, <laughs> he has some more stamped fabric. If I have pieces of fabric, they get stamped on and then they go into my fabric. Here's another piece that I stamped on. Um, I want some red. I have some um, beautiful, antique, very old, um, what do you call it? It's a very old tea towel. Made out of linen. It's beautiful. But I don't think it will go. This is pretty. Where can I put this? Let's see. So I'll put that there. So now everything has fabric, right? Yes. Everything has fabric, a piece of paper, some white. Some numbers. Now I add like little bits of pieces of lace. I'll put my threads in here. And I think I'll use this piece somewhere. Like, is that the right side? No. Yeah, it is. Only because it matches the journal, so I kind of wanted to have a lot of that. Not a lot, but you know what I mean. Excuse 
excuse me. Okay, so we're all done with that. And now, I'll bring out this, which I keep on my desk. And anytime I have little bits and pieces of lace left over, don't think I need these anymore, so I can put these back in my scrap bin. My Twisted Tangle and Dash, whoops, Twisted Tangle Dash Cluster Canister. I love the tin cans. Anything tin or glass, I love. And I make these boxes. I have these, some medicine that come. And so I, you know, I make up these boxes and, um, you know, just keep scraps or whatever. Everything in this box is pink. This is little, like, bits and pieces of, um, like, flatback pearls or sequins and things like that. And I have many more. Like, I have, like, ten. This box was from... I don't know where, but it was blue, and I don't know where it came from. I forget what was in it, so I just painted it white and then decoupaged it with napkin, and I keep all my lace bits in it, and like I said, there's no, there's words. These are all spring words, which shouldn't be in here. They actually should be in word box, which I'll put in word box later. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to set it aside over here so I can see here what I'm doing. I just wanted to show you where I'm pulling from. So now I'm just going to take some lace. I'm not going to be fussy. I want it torn. And I'm just going to kind of place, I kind of pull it and tear it and not tear it, but, you know, make it look kind of vintagey and old. I don't want to cover Peter and I don't really want to cover the numbers. So I'll put this, what happened to that? I think my sleeves are getting in the way. Where are we in time? My goodness, I have to stop talking. Okay. So what are you all working on? Soon you'll all be working on Easter, I'm sure. Spring, of course. This is a real old piece. I love these pieces. Because they're, you know, they have a lot of holes and, you know, kind of see through them. That, they're hard. It's not real hard, but they're harder to put the buttons on. So I don't go through the paper all the way. What I'll do is I'll place the button and just like sew the button there. Just so you have an idea of what I'm doing. Here's another piece. So I'll just cut that like that. And maybe put it over here. So now I have some fabric, I have some lace, I have some papers. I don't have any numbers, but I do have a lot of script. I don't know that my words, my fabric words, I don't think they'll fit on these. So I might have to use those in something different. And see how I'm not really, I covered Peter up. I can't cover him up. I'm not really um, placing things evenly. It's kind of like off. So now that that's all set, 
and looking good. Now look, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I hadn't talked, I'd have that done in two minutes. Um, look at this. I can't use it. I, I just can't use it. I have had it forever. It's very antique. My brother gave it to me. I had a much bigger piece, but it's all I have left, and I can't use it. <laughs> I don't know why I keep it in my scrap bin. I think that's it. We've got lace on everything. No, we don't. Dang it. Hold on one second. Maybe some blue. Blue would be good, right? I'll put blue behind there. Just for some more color. I'm sure when I opened that box, you were like, yep, everything's pink. <laughs> but it's not really. It's white. Some blue. I'll put some blue under there. And here. And here. Let's put this here. Here. I just love this piece of paper. No idea where kid it came from either. But I know it's digital. Push this back up here. There. That looks good. So now all you're going to do is glue it. You know, glue the pieces together. Let me close my box. And I just put a magnet underneath here. When I put this paper on, I put a magnet there to keep it closed. But it's a great box, you know, for your lace and what have you. Um, I need a word or a number. Let me just see real quick if my fabric, any of my fabric, oops, sorry. Any of my fabric words will fit, like Beatrix will fit here. And let's see, Jeremy. Um, do I have a Flopsy on here? Huh. I don't, but I have that fabric, so that's good. Kitten. I thought I had a kitten here. I guess not. Flowers. And like I said, these are on fabric. And these are the um, ones that I put on the... Um, that I put on the, um, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. They're just so much easier to cut. Squirrel neck, and I know I had a squirrel somewhere, but I'll put it on a page with squirrel neck, and no, well, maybe not. You know who I'm looking for is um, Jeremiah Puddle Duck. She's so cute. How about... I have other words in here. Oh! Jeremiah Puddle Duck. No. But if I did something like this... And I did this and this. Just change it up a little bit. Oh, but hmm. I'm gonna use that for something else. And leave this alone. Which is 
what I should have done in the first place. Now you know when I go to glue it, it will not all look the same. Isn't she cute? So cute. Okay, gotta put this back in here. You know when I go to glue it, it will not look the same, but it's okay. So now we've got our fabric, paper, lace, some words, and how about how to use a Peter Rabbit? And how about Hippity Hop? Oh, Hilltop! Actually, I think I like Hilltop there. I have to remember I might be putting a button or something there, so I have to be careful of where I place my words and numbers. I don't think I need any numbers because I have words. So let me get one more word and then I'll show you the rest. Do I have cottontail in here? I have countryside. That'll be good. We'll use countryside. I love printing on fabric. It gives it so much dimension and I don't know it's kind of fun and like I said if you put it on the interfacing which only takes a minute especially if you have a craft iron and, and it's right in your room I just take out my wool pad that I use for my slow stitch and just bam just iron it on so there we go. Countryside will go there. And then I'm not going to glue it down really good because, of course, I'm going to sew it. But if you're not going to sew it, just make sure you put down enough glue that everything, you know, is going to stay together. And I will put the buttons on later. I, I can actually glue it later. I don't have to glue it on screen because I've kept you long enough. But I'll show you what the buttons will look like. Like I'll put a button there. And then I, this is so adorable. My goodness, that is so cute. Lace, and numbers, and script, and what have you. Oh, I have to show you what I found when I was going through my buttons. Look at this. I don't know where it came from, but it was in my button box. It was Peter Rabbit. I don't know what I'm gonna use it on. I can't use it on these because it's too bulky. But can you believe that? I almost died. I'm like, wait, that's Peter Rabbit. No, I can't use that. That's a Mother of Pearl. If you have Mother of Pearl buttons, if somebody says they're Mother of Pearl, to tell whether it's my Mother of Pearl Put it against your cheek. If it's cold, it's real mother of pearl. That's how you tell if it's mother of pearl. Just saying. That will go there. I'm looking for something yellow. Go here. That's too pink. But you get the point, right? Um, I have this kind of squarish one, but I don't know where it is. That's a lot of white. I'm just giving you some ideas. This kind of square one is really pretty. But it needs something with a lot of color. So I'll put that one there. But isn't that pretty? It's like square. These are all vintage. Not all of them. That's from England, actually. My friend sent me those. But most of them are vintage. That's not vintage. Anything you see that's like real bright colors, they're not vintage. 
that would be nice there. That's very nice there. And then I'll do a baby button here. That one still needs a button, so I'll do a baby button. Or that's got the same green, so I'll probably do that. So I won't glue it together or sew it on camera. I just wanted to show you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue all of these onto my tea stain paper. Then I'm just going to tear it like this. And then I'm going to bring it over, you know, I'll bring them all over to my sewing machine and I'll just stitch it. You know, just make sure it, it, I caught it all. And with this particular stitch, it catches all the fabric. Then I sew my button on. And then I'm done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you've got eight done in one session. And when I'm done with this, I'll probably do another one. So that's it. Simple. Simple. So you just move this over. And then you... Just start gluing, you know? Very simple, very easy. Take this, I don't have my glue book, but I'm not gonna glue a lot on because I'm gonna sew. But if you're not gonna sew, just make sure you put a lot of glue on there. So I'm gonna put that there. And then some script there and you know it probably won't look the same as I had it when I put it down but I've got all my pieces that kind of looks upside down I'm going to turn it this way I have a problem with things being upside down I don't know why this I'll just put a little bit on and I'll let these dry I won't sew them tonight And then I'll put this piece here. Of course, take out my threads and save them. I'll put those in my thread envelope in a minute. I'll show you tomorrow when I do a video, I'll show you what I do with those. So that will go there. Oh no, I have to put down my blue lace first. And I like to take my lace and kind of Pull it like this, just because it kind of gives it a little bit of a, a dimension, if you know what I mean. Sometimes it will tear, which is fine with me. It might not be fine with some people, but you're like, why are you taking that vintage lace and destroying it? But I'm not destroying it, I'm just making it look good. <laughs> Silly. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on that and put it here. And then I'm going to put this piece here. And this Scotch Create is really good on um, fabric. Put that there. And I am just going to trim that white off of this flopsy. And I'll show you how easy this is when you have the interfacing on it. See? If I didn't have the interfacing on it, I wouldn't be able to cut it like that. It would be driving me nuts because it would be all over the place. And you can use fabric letters, I mean, um, paper letters. You don't, you know, I mean, if you can see on these, these are paper numbers. Because I ran out of fabric numbers. <laughs> if you really want to know the truth. And then just put some glue. And let's see. I think I'll do something like this. And now that it's all done, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to tear it.
like this. And I'm going to tear these edges because the rest of it is torn. I'm sorry my videos are so long. I'm trying to make them shorter. Oh. I'll put that up there because I might be able to use it. So I, I don't get rid of all the tea stain paper. I just try to make it a little bit more uniform. And then my button will go, you know, somewhere or not. You don't have to put a button. If I don't feel like that button works, I'll, you know, I'll find another one. I'll sew this. Now, if I want to hang it on something, I could take something like little puddle duck here and I could put it on the back like this. And then I could take a bulb pin Any color will do. And then all you have to do, you could even put the button on here instead of on here, because there is a lot, you know, I don't really want to cover anything up. So what I would do is, oops, What I will do is I'd get a button and take it put it through here put it through my paper and it's nice and sturdy because you know you've got your tea stain you've got your fabric And then you could take little Miss Piddle Duck, Puddle Duck, sorry. She's on the back. Or you could even put her, you know, on the front if you're going to use it as a dangle. But I'm not, I, I'd put it on the back for this one because it will cover up too much of the front. Like this. And then you could hang it off a page or what have you. And you've got yourself a really cute dangle. So yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do. And then if I'll show you what you can do with this, just as an example, you know, here's a page. Take this, put some threads or cheesecloth underneath it, glue it down, and you've, you know, glue it here, and you've got a great side tuck, or just glue it down for, you know, a decoration or what have you. And that's it. This one, let me find a page. You don't really want to poke a hole in this because I'm not going to leave it there, but you could hang this here. There's not a lot of bulk at all. And if it swings, you've got this cute little you know, thing on the back. Or, you know, if you've got any other kind of journal or what have you, um, you could attach it to some ribbon ruffle if you put it on the side of your journal. So yeah, there's lots of things you can do with these. They are, and they're so fun to make and relaxing. So when I come back in my next video, I'll show you how these turned out after I glue them and sew them. But see how many you can make in just a simple time. You can also put them all on before you put your buttons on and you can just take your sewing machine and sew all the way across here, turn your machine, you know, turn it, sew all the way across here and then do your ripping and tearing. The only problem I find with that is you're cutting threads between each one so that's why I like to do this and then take them over to my machine and just do a zigzag or you know freehand or what have you so that is my second video for today I'm so excited and I will save those scraps for later so until our next time together 
If I've inspired you in any way, please do consider subscribing. Leave your YouTube channel so I can subscribe to your channel and get some ideas and share them. I always like to try and mention where I got my items or my ideas from. And um, yeah, so in next video, which will be after this video, <laughs> be well, be safe, and God bless. Love y'all. Bye-bye.